We used to think that our DNA could not be changed and it was a curse. Like if your parents had uh, cancer and maybe a sibling had it or your grandparents, you were doomed or the same thing with a heart attack or a stroke or whatever it was. But now we've found through epigenetics that we can actually have some control over our DNA and we can change it. It's amazing. We're in a very dynamic equilibrium with our environment. And, the, and what we expose ourselves to in terms of our, of our environment, whether it be environmental toxins or it be something that is good for us or we exercise a lot or we're eating good food or not good food or whatever it is, has a profound effect at how our genes express themselves and how they differentiate into either being genes that support wellness or genes that can support illness, depending on what they do. You know, maybe it would be helpful, though, to just kind of define for a minute what DNA is. Well, it's the, it's the part of our body that makes up genes. They're the chemicals that regulate protein synthesis and all kinds of chemicals in our body. They're the master plan, so we thought, of the whole body and how it functioned. And here we find out now that, yes, it's important, but it's more like a machine that's set into action. And the machine is very much responsive to what it's around. So if you're eating a healthy diet and you've got a lot of fruits and vegetables, we're finding out by a study that was just done that guess what? Your risk for developing a heart attack is going to go down. And we know that Dean Ornish did some studies a couple of years ago now on men with prostate cancer. And he looked at about 300 patients who had prostate cancer all by biopsy. And so we knew they had that. Half of them he didn't do anything to, and he rebiopsied them at three months, and it showed the 500 genes that were being evaluated were still turned on to produce cancer. The other 150 people were given diet, exercise, stress reduction. They were doing yoga and meditation, eating a healthy diet for sure. And at the end of three months, rebiopsied them, and the bulk of those 500 oncogenes were turned off, which tells you that the power of your environment is, is extraordinary. And there's something besides just the power of your environment and your lifestyle, but it's your belief system. Exactly. And that's something that hasn't been studied so much, but needs to be studied because what you think profoundly affects your physiology and your biochemistry. We did something kind of weird several years ago. We did a fire walk. And I mean, the, the coals were how many? 2,000 2, degrees. 2,000 degrees hot. I mean, that's hot enough to kill you or burn your feet off or whatever. It didn't and... seem like the smartest thing to do, but <laughs> there we were in this place where everybody was doing it and nobody was getting hurt, and it was like, I felt it like was I pretty, had to do it. it. Was real, but it was really amazing because we didn't get burned. and to think Nobody you, got burned. Yeah, and to think that you could walk on coals like that just from the power of your mind because we'd been prepared for, for doing this. But that just shows how that can enter into affecting your genes as well. So what we have is a DNA system that is very responsive to our environment and what we think and probably everything that we do. So we should realize that power and we should gain confidence that we can do a lot to modify what our genes are like. We can turn off those cancer genes, and now we know we can turn off those genes that will cause heart attacks. And we can also turn on bad genes. <laughs> exactly. You know, if we're not taking good care of ourselves or if something happens to us, maybe you'd like to just touch on your story a little bit, what's happened with your hip. Right. I've just had a hip resurfacing about a year ago, and I had a fracture as a complication of, of that procedure about six weeks ago. And that fracture has caused amazing changes in my biochemistry. Normally, I'll run an HDL of about 70 or 80, and as high as 90, it's now 32, which puts me into a very high-risk group for developing a heart attack or a stroke or some other kind of uh, inflammatory condition. So it's things like that that drive home the message that your DNA will do what it needs to to adapt to what your needs are and to what your exposures are. You have the right thoughts. You have the right kind of diet, you reduce your stress levels, you're getting enough sleep, you weigh what you should, you have a meaningful purpose in your life, 
Why wouldn't your DNA support you? Why wouldn't it do the kinds of things that will make you live a long, healthy life? And of course, like if, if you, you don't, don't, I was going to say story. too, like if you don't tend to have big muscles or you don't ha have shapely muscles, I mean, you can change that DNA too by exercising. Exactly. What do you think changes what a muscle will grow into? DNA is our friend. Our genes are expression. Are, are what our DNA is made. Or what our genes are. Our genes are made of DNA. They're very modifiable. The universe is what I would say very cooperative in allowing us to be able to change how our bodies are, both good and bad, depending on how we treat them. So keep that in mind and remember, you're not doomed by the DNA that you're born with. But if you don't live a healthy lifestyle you will be doomed to probably express those genes in 